Hi, welcome back. This is Tony from Tony Ben LLC. Today we're going to be going over some new products from Shooting Site LLC, um, which is run by a guy named Art Niergaard. And what he sent me was uh, a couple of uh, fully adjustable triggers. One happens to be a uh, standard contour trigger, just like a, a GI one, but this one's fully adjustable and it's got a uh, trigger pull reduction weight and a trigger sear engagement uh, adjustment here. Um, that's fully adjustable for a match grade rifle. And then what we're also going to have is the uh, his uh, his brand new EBR trigger. Now, if you'll notice, uh, when you see these side by side, you'll see that they have a different trigger contour, and this is going to allow you to have a more natural drop-in trigger pull uh, for M14s that have chassis with pistol grip stocks. So we'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> All right, so what I've got here is I've got three different trigger groups that I'm going to use to demonstrate a couple of different things. Uh, again, now you can see really right here, you can see the difference in contour between the EBR trigger and the standard trigger here. So uh, these these triggers and his hammer are made from uh, CNC machine from tool steel, and they've been the contact surfaces for the sear engagement have been uh, polished and lapped, and the parts have been finished off with a nickel boron treatment. So what we have here is his skeletonized hammer and this is a lot lighter than a GI hammer and this reduces your lock time which is the hammer swing time from the time that it releases to the time that it hits the firing pin by about 25 percent. You're probably wondering when you're going to need a skeletonized hammer and a skeletonized hammer really comes into play when you're talking about NRA, CMP, uh, high power matches, okay, military style high power rifle, high power matches, especially in the standing position. When you're in a standing position, you're trying really hard to keep the sights on target, and any reduced time from the time that you break the trigger to the time the hammer hits the firing pin and sets off the round, if that time is reduced, you're more likely to break the shot and still remain on target than uh, one with a slower swing time. So again, this is about a 25% reduction in swing time. So um, I, I imagine that's quite a bit um, of a difference when, when you're in that kind of a competition. Now also, the lock time is comparable to a match-tuned AR-15 hammer. All right, so what I've got here is the EBR version of his fully tunable match-grade trigger, okay? And what you've got here is you've got two different uh, set screws. One set screw here with a spring-loaded plunger that basically aids in your trigger pull and reduces pull weight. And then right here you've got the second stage sear engagement or creep adjustment. So what this allows you to do is once you pull that trigger and you, your first stage is taken up, you only have minimal movement. Um, you can adjust this so you have minimal movement till your second stage breaks. Okay. And again, this has a different um, profile than a standard trigger, okay, and this is really going to uh, help you with a pistol gripped stock, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So what I've got here is a complete USGI trigger group with no modifications, no tuning whatsoever, and this action is dropped in a M14 uh, Canada black feather chassis with a pistol grip stock, okay. So I've got my trigger pull scale all ready to go, and so what we're going to do is just, we're just going to verify what this trigger pull weight is before I add any components. So there's our second stage. We're at three pounds, five ounces. We're up to four, five, so about five pounds, two ounces is what this particular trigger broke at. And we'll try it again. About again, about five pounds, one ounce. All right, so what I want to go ahead and show you right now is the reason why we have an EBR profile trigger or a trigger shoe. Okay, so with a pistol gripped uh, M14, as you pull the trigger, what you'll notice is right here at the bottom of the trigger, how I have this, um, the flesh of my finger 
overlaps the, the tip of the trigger guard. And although you don't think it's a big deal, if you shoot this for some extended range trips, uh, you'll notice that it actually gets quite uncomfortable after quite a few rounds. So the, the EBR profile trigger helps you get a much more natural pistol grip feel when you're pulling the trigger. All right, so let's get started with the insulation. Remove your trigger group. We're gonna go ahead and disassemble the trigger group. Now what I also wanted to point out is this particular hammer pin is actually the shooting sight hammer pin. So his kit comes with a hammer pin that's uh, again made from tool steel and has been nickel boron coated. spring tension there. Punch out the trigger pin. And again, his, we're going to replace it with his anyway. So go ahead and take out the trigger, the uh, hammer spring and plunger, and plunger housing. So we'll put that aside. We'll put this one aside. Now also, what I want to note is on a GI hammer, this pivot point is actually lower. So he has a special uh, hammer spring plunger that is that sits higher than a regular one. Okay, so you can see the difference there. And what I assume, I, he hasn't confirmed this, but I'll assume because this hammer is lighter, it's got less mass, it needs to swing a little bit faster to make sure you get reliable ignition and to and get that, that quicker lock time. So he's moved the pivot point up or not the pivot point, but he's moved the leverage point up away from the pivot point. Okay. Punch out our hammer pin. Remove the hammer. Drop in the new hammer. Okay. Make sure you get it in the right way. Okay, so our hammer is there. So now we're going to set the plunger aside. Now on the EBR trigger, when you do put this in, what I recommend doing, and again, I've used this one quite a bit already, so I've got Loctite on there. So you're supposed to put the Loctite that he that he sends along with the kit, Loctite 222, which is a medium strength uh, thread locker. You definitely don't want to use 242. 242 is permanent. You would have to use some heat. But what I do is I back out this set screw all the way. Um, it's going to save your hand it really gouges up my hand when I try to put it in with it and then also this set screw here from the bottom you want to back it out all the way as well well like I said I've been using this trigger for a while and I actually had to I tried to install it with the plunger stuck out because I couldn't get the set screw out and it just wasn't working so I had to hit this with some uh, with some heat break the Loctite down and go ahead and and back the set screw all the way out so again you can see the now, when he installs this screw, it's installed from the from from this direction in. So what you're actually doing is you're inserting it all the way, because the threads, this hole in the threads, don't extend out towards past here. So you're going to have to um, back it all the way out, and you're going to have just a little bit sticking out there. Okay. So now we're going to get our trigger house or our trigger group. Let's do this over. Again, this is going to be. The engagement point is going to be on the top. Put our housing in, spring housing. I get this little guy here going in there. Much better, much, much better. All right. So, I hope you guys got that. So let me try to do that again for the for the, for the camera. So we're all set and. You're just going to compress the spring, slide in the pin, go ahead and push the hammer back, lock it, run this forward, push the trigger forward here, and get the pin fully seated in. So now we've got a fully seated pin in here, and uh, so you actually see that if you don't, if you don't have the set screw in here, and you have this all the way backed out, you actually won't let go of the you can't actually shoot it, so you've got to go ahead and, and finish installing it. So that's where the second stage sear engagement screw comes into play. Um, that's going to use the, 
the smaller Allen wrench that he supplies. So go ahead and get that screw. Now if you left this screw in while I try to install it, the way that I install it with the palm of my hand, it digs into the palm. So I actually take this out for insulation. You're going to go ahead and reinsert it. Now also what I want you to notice is this angle right here on the second stage sear, okay, um, or whatever you want to call it, is it's at a steeper angle. Now if you look at this particular one, if you look at, at this part of the trigger, this is a much gradual, it's, it's coming down a lot straighter. This one here is more of like a 30 degree angle. Well, this one here is more of a 45 degree angle. And what that does is that means that you can lighten this trigger pull up quite a bit and still not get doubles when shooting, um, when, when you shoot. So if you have this particular trigger and you, and you creep it down past, you know, less than four and a half pounds, you're a lot more likely to double fire, get a, a bump fire with this trigger that's been tuned than with this trigger, which has which has been set extremely light, um, you won't get doubles with this one, okay? And I, I can attest to that. I've had this adjusted as light as it will possibly go. Okay, right there. So at that point, you heard that click. Now let me, let me back this up a little bit here. So at this point, Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to adjust that screw until this hammer um, releases and engages the sear. And we're about there. There it goes. So now we can actually, you, you can actually at this point adjust your second stage creep. So what you're going to do is you're going to... Um, so you notice that as we pull the trigger there, we're going to keep tightening the screw. We're going to keep keep advancing the screw, and that's going to move this back. And you're going to you're going to keep adjusting it until you lose your second stage, and then you're going to back it out. Okay. So we're going to go a little bit, check it, check it. Oh, but at that point we've lost our second stage. So now it just it literally the this. This contact, these two contact points literally roll off of each other without any interference from here. Okay, watch. And it just let go. Okay, so what you want to do is back it off. Okay, back that screw out. Okay, so now we have a second stage um, engagement point and we've taken out all the creep. So from this point, it's just a little bit more. Okay, and what you can do is you can just tweak it a little bit, okay? And just any second now, that will lose our second stage. Okay, at that point. So now we're just gonna back it off just a tad. Um, he usually says about an eighth or a quarter of a turn, uh, but you can tailor it to your liking. So I backed it off a little bit. Okay, so we still have our second stage. So at this point, I'm going to take that Allen wrench out. So we've got our second stage. And there we are. And then just a little bit more. Boom. And we've taken, we've removed all the creep that we can from this trigger. Now is the point where you adjust the trigger pull. So what you're going to do is cock the hammer, okay? And what this screw does back here, this actually pushes on the the um, hammer spring housing, and because it's it's mounted to the trigger, what that that's that plunger actually pushes the trigger back, it, or it it adds force so that as you pull, you're not using as much force. So we're going to go ahead and advance this in there. And I'll see if you can. Okay, so you can see there's the plunger. And I basically just keep screwing it in. Um, I keep screwing it in until the set screw actually touches, and then I back it off a little bit. Maybe about a half a turn or so. Okay. Um, so again, what we're looking at 
is that point right there. I'm looking at that point right there. So you can probably see the screw. Okay, so as I'm backing it out, you can see the plunger. So I'm going to advance this screw as far in as I can till it just touches. Okay, so at that point there it stopped. Now it's actually the, the, the plunger is completely compressed and I'm just going to back it off a little bit. Okay, um, and again at this point you're supposed to put Loctite in there and tune it to your liking. So now comes the point where you insert it into the rifle and you check your trigger pull weight. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and insert this trigger group in here. Lock it in place. Okay. And we've got our trigger pull weight scale. Okay, so here we go. So right there, that's really light. So our second stage is at two pounds, 0 0.2 ounces. That's where, um, that's where we meet our second stage. And then from there, three pounds, 9.4 ounces. That's as light as I can get this thing. And we'll go ahead and try this again. Four pounds, 0 0.4 ounces. And one more time. 2.6 ounces for first stage. Second stage is 4 pounds, 1.9 ounces. So um, just by dropping in this trigger and this speed hammer, we're able to adjust this trigger all the way down to under to around 4 pounds, which is really good. Now keep in mind that if you're going to install this trigger and hammer combination for a service rifle competition, the minimum legal weight is 4.5 pounds, so you need to tweak the set screw till you get 4.5 pounds. So just uh, for illustration's sake, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and back out this set screw a little bit, just so we can get a different pull weight. So I've only compressed the spring about halfway at this point. So now... See, we already increased our trigger weight. Uh, we got two pounds, 12 ounces before we hit the second stage. And I got four pounds, eight ounces at that one, or four point, four pounds, 7.9 ounces, so 4.8 ounces, which is, you know, four and a half pounds. What I want to go ahead and show you now is uh, the difference between that standard profile trigger and the EBR trigger. So here I have a nice natural grip, uh, well as natural as I can while having my hand in the camera range. And uh, as I pull straight back on that trigger, you can see my finger never overlaps the tip of the trigger. Okay, so, so this trigger has a much more um, straighter uh, and longer trigger to give you a more natural trigger pull, okay, with the pistol grip stock. So um, I'd like to think I had something to do with this because when Art was running out of GI triggers and he was going to start making some new ones, I said, hey, why don't you go ahead and change something to your CAD design and run a batch of EBR triggers because it would be really nice. And um, I don't know if anybody else suggested it to him, uh, but he ended up following up on it. And so here we are today with a drop-in, fully tunable, um, match-grade trigger for pistol grip EBR M14. And what I did want to show you um, also is this is uh, basically a trigger shoe, and up until the up until the drop-in replacement EBR trigger, the only option that we had for pistol grips was the EBR trigger shoe. Um, it is a good quick solution, uh, it, well as good as it can be. The, the only issue with these is that it's held on by two very small set screws, okay, on the other side. And this is all that holds that trigger shoe on there. Um, 
my personal experience with this was um, if you tighten them too much you strip the heads and even then there was still a good chance that the trigger shoe would fall off um, however what it did do again is it provided that very nice natural feel when you pull the trigger the other thing that it did that I really liked was that it fattens the trigger up by about two times and it's a, it's a very very comfortable trigger um, again the only thing the solution that I had to come up with was gluing it in place now the disadvantage to that is that you can't disassemble your trigger group for servicing um, so what you'd end up having to do is uh, because I use red Loctite I'd have to hit it with a heat gun and just tap it off with a hammer um, but again at this it's kind of a, a patch fix it doesn't really um, you know, it's it's a temporary fix for the for the problem. Um, it is very comfortable, but it doesn't do anything to change trigger pull weight. Okay, so I'll illustrate again here. So uh, this particular one breaks at five pounds, one point six ounces, and I can't adjust that unless I do a traditional stoning uh, trigger jack. So what I've got here is, uh, again, this is another completely separate GI trigger group. Um, and what I'm going to do is show you the kind of trigger pull that I can get just with the trigger alone without the speed hammer. Okay, So as is right now, this particular trigger unmodified breaks at six pounds, 9.4 ounces. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've installed the uh, the standard profile match grade trigger in here, and I've adjusted as light as I can possibly get it, okay, and still have a second stage. So our first stage only takes two pounds, five ounces, and we're gonna to keep going. So we've got 4.2 pounds, or sorry, 4 pounds, 2.3 ounces. So all that just from changing the trigger and adjusting it. So we basically took off about 2 pounds off the trigger pull. Okay. And again, I've been using these triggers for a few months now, and I absolutely love them. So if you're looking for a good trigger that uh, doesn't require any gunsmithing or uh, filing and, and stoning, um, it's fully adjustable, it's a great trigger, and as far as I know of, it's the only adjustable trigger out there for the M14 or M1A. And again, these triggers will work in Garands as well. It's, uh, as I was messing around with this trigger, I wanted to show you another trick here. It turns out that uh, if you're lucky, you maybe be able to get your Allen wrench into the back of the screw and go ahead and tweak it while the trigger housing is in place. So. So thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful. And thanks again Art for sending me the triggers.